Battlefield 4, a game that had a heap of controversy when it first launched and later righted the ship, is now often referred to as one of the greatest titles in the franchise. But nine years later and the Battlefield franchise has gone through a lot of changes. Does coming back to one of the greats hold up as well as everybody remembers? Now, in my experience of playing BF4 again after some time off, I was both reminded of some of the great aspects of the classic game and some of the things that I'm frankly glad are gone. Gone. We're fine here, right? Oh my god! You capped. Today, I want to talk about my experience of diving back into Battlefield 4, do some reminiscing, talk about the good and bad aspects of the game, and how it compares with where we are today. So let's get into it. Now, upon entering a match of Battlefield 4, I was reminded of how much I appreciate the older game's UI customization and loadout menus. Battlefield 4 was designed with PC heavily in mind, giving players extremely easy access to modifying weapon loadouts and customizing the UI with minimap size and placement. In later Battlefield games, the UI often seemed to take a console first approach to its design, often making loadout customization a longer, more laborious process says, if you play on the PC anyway. There are some other nice quality of life features that I certainly miss in the modern titles, like the respawn screen showing your teammates view before you choose to respawn on them. This was a crazy helpful feature to try and avoid spawning into almost certain death situations. I'm also always surprised every time I jump back into this game with just how well the graphics hold up on this nearly nine year old title. Sure, the shaders are aging and the lighting is noticeably lacking, but the art team at DICE implemented a lot of tricks to make this game look fantastic for its time and that allows it to hold up impressively well today. It's also nice to be able to crank the resolution up to 4K and set the visuals to ultra as well. Nine years of PC hardware upgrades has given me some new settings to play around with. I will say though that DICE definitely had the contrast of this game all out of whack and visibility didn't feel right until I cranked the brightness up to 75%. So while DICE did manage to get rid of most of Battlefield 3's heavy-handed color grading, they couldn't quite shake the overly dramatic lighting, which nobody wants in a competitive shooter environment. The exaggerated light to dark transitions are things that Battlefield 4 unfortunately had and were things that were even exacerbated in future titles. Now when looking for servers via the server browser, it was nice to see that there's still a healthy community of gamers regularly playing Battlefield 4. Now granted, a big chunk of the full servers are playing hardcore mode, which was never really my cup of tea, but the fact that modifying Battlefield 4's rules has allowed players to turn the game into a version of itself that the post-launch community really wants to play is a pretty darn cool aspect of this game in general. It can just sometimes take a little bit of work going through the server browser and filters to find a populated vanilla server. Battlefield 4 server browser also has this fun quote unquote feature where servers use tools to spoof the player numbers so that when you join up on them thinking it's a full 64 player match and then you end up in a server with only like three or four people in it, it's pretty annoying. But once you're actually in a decent server playing the map you like with the rules that you like, the map auto rollover feature is fantastic. Now, obviously the matchmaking approach to Battlefield games has been one of the more drastic changes over the year, and there's a lot of pros and cons of the Battlefield 4 system versus the more modern approach. Battlefield 4 caters much better to community building with dedicated server rentals and groups of players that often show up repeatedly to play, where 2042's server system randomizes players each match, which often leads to more balanced games. Now looking at it from a YouTuber slash streamer perspective, 2042 system is much more friendly to avoid excessive stream sniping, but I do miss having my favorite servers from Battlefield 4 that I would play regularly. Also lacking a server browser in the modern system means that picking maps that you're in the mood for is more or less impossible. You just kind of have to play whatever the game throws at you. Now one thing that I'll never miss from Battlefield 4, and honestly it's one of the main gripes and reasons that I don't go back to play it more regularly, is the difficulty of getting into a full squad of your friends. It's almost entirely reliant on having a friendly server admin switching you to the team you want to be on. Due to the way that players join matches and the strict team switching rules that servers often implement, 
implement, friends are commonly separated upon joining a new server. It's something that the later games have done a much better job of fixing, and I always get comments about how much people miss the old squad up days, but what people never saw was the massive amount of trial and error trying to get into the same team on a server. It could take 45 minutes or even longer at times. It's somewhat ironic considering that Battlefield, especially Battlefield 4, has always been hailed as a great teamwork game, and yet only after Battlefield 4 did it get better squad matchmaking tools. Now hopping into Conquest, it was nice to feel more powerful as infantry when it came to dealing with armored targets. Tanks don't really feel like these unkillable targets in this game, even when you're by yourself. An unaware tank driver could be easy prey for a smart engineer. Later games did a lot of work to change this to make armor much stronger on the battlefield, and it could give armor users an extreme advantage, especially on the scoreboard. It's debatable as to what the best approach is to infantry versus armor balance, but Battlefield 4 felt much closer in my opinion than many of the later games. Now revisiting some of my favorite guns in Battlefield 4 was kind of a mixed experience to be honest. The time to kill in Battlefield 4 is fast and satisfying, but the weapon profiles when switching between top tier assault rifles and carbines kind of blends together. It's something where I think the later games improved upon, where there was more unique feeling weapons. Battlefield 4 had tons of guns to pick from, but the differences can be extremely subtle. Still, the power and fast TTK on the guns makes you feel like you can really mow down the competition with fast peeking and good flanks, allowing an extremely good player to dominate a number of lesser players. And this can feel a little bit less doable in the more recent games, at least when just using your primary weapon exclusively, and it's certainly debatable as to whether or not this is a good change with modern games or if the old way was better. Now when it comes to weapon balance, Battlefield 4 definitely put a huge amount of power into assault rifles and carbines, while the other categories kind of fell behind. Again, other games did a better job of making different weapon classes more competitive. Revisiting Battlefield 4, I rarely saw anyone using machine guns or DMRs. The occasional PDW was seen, but most of the time assault rifles and carbines were the weapon of choice. Now it's pretty easy to forget that Battlefield 4 had its fair share of cheesy mechanics. While I was playing, there was a a super annoying UCAV user just spamming the UCAV all around from the safety of the deployment and honestly it was kind of a game ruining experience. One of the more effective ways to deal with that type of players to just play counter UAV against them but at that point you're really just being forced to play in a way that you don't want to. Counter knifing was also buggy as I remember and just something that I'm so glad that the franchise has gotten rid of over the years. I also momentarily hopped into a 24-7 locker server until I realized that every Everyone was just spamming smokes and using FLIR optics to see through the smoke, again a mechanic that I absolutely hated from Battlefield 4 and it had me quit out of the round immediately. Joining on a round of Goldmud Railway also reminded me of how imbalanced vehicle play can get as I was being killed by helicopters even before I was able to really make it out of my spawn. And despite having plenty of maps in Battlefield 4 that catered well to infantry, the larger, more open maps definitely lack cover and often the ability to move around safely as an infantry. It's something that is easily forgotten because players have the choice of playing infantry focused maps in Battlefield 4, but the ones that offered vehicle heavy maps are really just absolutely dominated by the vehicles and offer a few fun options for infantry to fight back. These are definitely areas that I think the more recent games have generally improved upon. Overall, I had a good time revisiting a nine-year-old game and reminding myself of the fun and different approach to Battlefield's design. Simultaneously, there's so many aspects that can be challenging to deal with if you've been playing the newer games a lot more. And it seems like pretty much every era of Battlefield has had its fair share of cheesy, gimmicky additions. Now coming away from Battlefield 4 once again made me appreciate what a fantastic game it was for its time way back in 2013. This was a game that was pushing hardware to the max and doing the most it could within certain limitations, especially considering the console hardware limitations. Fast forwarding to 2022 and there's plenty of quality of life features that gamers have come to expect, which can make going backwards a little bit more challenging. But what do you guys think? Have you gone back to Battlefield 4 recently? Are there any of you that that never played Battlefield 4 back when it was in its prime and tried it out later and what did you think about it? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments section and I hope you guys enjoyed revisiting Battlefield 4 with me. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.